right so let us uh, start uh, by recalling what we were doing we were looked at we were looking at the closed subsets of uh, rn and then we looked at what is called the closure of a set and we proved uh, the result namely a bar is uh, closed a bar is the closure of the set a it is a closed set and in fact we proved it is a smallest closed subset which includes the given set next we look at some more uh, properties of uh, special points uh, of sets so let us uh, start looking at what are called so we are given a set a contained in rn and we say a point x belonging to rn is a limit point of a if we say it is a limit point of a if for every epsilon bigger than 0 if we look at the ball centered at x of radius epsilon minus the point x that must intersect a so that is non empty so whatever ball you give at the point x it should intersect the set a at a point possibly other than x right because we are not saying x belongs to a or not right so if in case x belongs to a then every point will uh, be a limit point so we are not uh, we are looking at points which are such that so this is what is called uh, such a thing is called a deleted neighborhood of the point x so from the ball you are removed the center right so that is called a deleted neighborhood so a point is a limit point if uh, every deleted neighborhood of that intersects the set a such points are also sometimes limit points is also some some people call it a accumulation points right let us also define uh, a point x which belongs to a is called an interior point it is called an interior point of a if there exists some epsilon bigger than 0 such that the ball centered at x of radius epsilon is inside a so if you are looking a kind of a picture it says that so if this is a, this is a set a then a point is a interior point if there is some radius epsilon such that the ball open ball around it of radius epsilon is completely inside and you say x is a, a limit point so this is x is a limit point if i take any ball of radius epsilon then it should intersect the set a at some point so that is called the limit point so let us uh, have a notation for a0 upper 0 is or denotes the set of all limit points oh sorry uh, interior points of not limit points interior points points of uh, interior points of the set a so here are uh, some obvious properties so let us uh, look at uh, those properties so interior points and limit points okay so a point is a limit point if the open ball i uh, call it i here minus the center intersects say for every ball every open ball whatever the radius may be an interior point 
if there is some ball which is inside a centered at x which is inside a so that is the interior right clear the relation between uh, these things uh, okay has some properties of some sets for example if you take the open set interval 0 1 right then every point is a interior point right because if we take a point x it will have some distance from 0 some distance from 1 look at the smaller of which ever it is so that open interval will be inside the open interval 0 to 1 okay uh, if you look at uh, open 0 and close at 1 then 1 is not a interior point right because at 1 if i take any ball that will go outside okay so there is no ball centered at 1 which is completely inside so 1 is not a interior point but 1 is a limit point right because whatever ball i take right at the point 1 it will intersect it will have some point of 0 1 okay look at the set for example 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 and so on right so what do you think is a limit point of this zero is a limit point right because if i take any ball at center at zero okay then zero does not belong to a right so as i removing from that ball if i take a open ball centered at zero any ball because this sequence 1 over n is going to converge to zero so after some stage all the points will be inside that ball so whatever the radius of that ball may be that is going to intersect a minus the center of course so there is a limit point can you say what are the interior points of this set interior point has to be a point of the set first of all so can 1 by 2 be interior point no obviously not because i can find a right whichever open ball i take around 1 by 2 it will go outside the set 1 by 2 1 by 3 and so on so there is no interior point interior is empty so similarly you can show that set of rationals right there is no interior point for set of rationals what about limit points limit point is a point in real line so that whichever neighborhood i take of that point it must intersect rationals and we know rationals are dense right so that means whichever ball i take it will positively contain a rational so all real numbers are limit points for the set q okay so uh, let us look at probably uh, one of the last ones uh, if you take a, any open ball centered at in rn i take a open ball then every point is an interior point right we pointed out yesterday also given any point in the open ball you can have a small radius i left that as an exercise so do it in the problem sessions that given any point in an open ball okay for example if i if i take a open ball like this this centered at some point if i take any other point then i can find a small radius what that should radius should be you have to figure it out right it's not very difficult to figure out what could be that radius so every point is a interior point for the ball what are the limit points what are the limit points for the open ball every point of the ball is a limit point anyway right because whatever ball i take at any point it left points other than the center also inside a right what about the points on the geometric boundary the distance equal to if the ball is of radius r so radius r all points at a distance exactly equal to r there are also points of there are limit points because if i take any ball at the boundary that will come inside also right it will have points inside so limit points are interior point and uh, these are possibly uh, limit points and of course uh, the ball inside also are limit points so look at uh, the complement of the closure given any set i am looking at rn minus a what is that that is a complement of the 
closure frame is it is related to the interior of something it is interior of the complement okay so let us see why it is so so we are looking at the complement of so let us look at uh, so let x belongs to r n minus a equation so what is the meaning of this it is in the complement that means x does not belong to it does not belong to a closure right it is in the complement of a a closure so what does it meaning say it does not belong to a closure what was a closure it was a set of all points such that if i take a ball it should intersect a every ball should intersect a that is a closure right closure of a set were the points such that every ball centered at that point should intersect a right okay so if it does not belong to closure means what negation of that statement that means there exists some epsilon bigger than 0 such that a ball centered at x of radius epsilon intersection a bar is a uh, intersection a is equal to empty set is that okay that is by definition of a closure but what does that mean this intersection is empty so where is that ball so where is that ball that is in the complement of a so what we have shown if x is a point here this is if and only if x is a point here and what is the meaning of this that x the ball at any at the point x there is a ball right there is some epsilon such that the ball is inside that set that means it is a interior point for that set so it says x belongs to rn minus a interior there is a set theory nothing more than that definition of the closure so definition of the closure says x belongs to the complement of the closure that means x does not belong to the closure it does not belong to the closure means there is at least one ball centered at x which does not intersect a so that is what we have written uh, intersect that a, right that means it must be in the closure and that means this is the interior point right so this says so implies r n minus a bar is equal to the complement and uh, take the interior is okay this not doing much actually just writing the definition and using the complement property so this is what we were saying here the first one the complement of the closure is the interior of the complement okay if i take complement of this what will i get that means a closure is equal to complement of the right hand side so that is the second thing just by complements i get the second statement right so a similar statement if you take here complement interior here complement closure okay that is equal to rn com, uh, complement of the interior so basically same thing definition right it belongs to closure that means there is a ball which should intersect a this set right and hence go to the other way now so just uh, note it down and try yourself i have given you the idea of the proof of the first one all remaining are same actually there is nothing much involved in it just definition of the closure and definition of the interior right closure means every ball at that point must intersect that set that is a closure right interior means there is at least one ball at that point which is inside the set okay so that is the interior so using that all these are easy to verify first one we have already verified other ones you can do complements and 
for example, from here to here, third to fourth, you take complement and you get that thing, right? Either by complements or by definition, you can prove. So, now let us define, we will call a set to be an open set. Till now, we have not defined what is called an open set. A set is called open if it is equal to its interior points. Given a set, set of interior points is a subset of it, right, with some property. Okay. So, what we are saying, a set is open, the definition is if all its points are interior points, A is equal to A interior, right. So, if A is equal to A interior, look at this thing, what does it give you? What does third give you? If I replace A by A interior, then right hand side is complement of A, right. So, what is complement of A? It is equal to closure of that set. If A is equal to A interior, what does the third equation tell you? Third tells me that the complement of the interior is equal to its closure. That means, the complement is a closed set, because its closure is itself. Is it okay? In equation 3, if I say that A is equal to A interior, what does right hand side mean? Right hand side becomes complement of A. Complement of A is equal to the closure of the complement, right? Same set. Complement of A closure is equal to complement of A. What does that mean? Whenever for a set A is equal to A closure, we prove that that is a closed set. A set is closed if and only if A is equal to A closure. So, a set is open if and only if its complement is closed. You get that property. From third, you get that property that a set is open if and only if its complement is a closed set. Okay? Normally, sometimes we, it is taken, this has taken as a definition, one defines an open set and takes closed set to be the complement of a, right. Closed set is defined as the sets whose complements are open. We are doing other way around. We have defined what is a closed set first. How is a closed set defined? We defined what is a closure, right. The points which can be approximated by, approached by limits of points in a, that was A closure. Then we said A is closed if A is equal to A closure. And we also proved it is the smallest closed set which includes A. So, that is a closed set. So, we define closed sets. And now we are saying is if we define a set to be open if its interior is equal to itself. For example, open interval. What is the interior of the open interval? So, open interval that is why it is called open. That interval round bracket A comma B is called open interval because it turns out to be an open set, right. Every point is a interior point. And similarly, if you look at the closed interval, what we call as a closed interval A B, right, its closure is equal to itself that is closed. And what is the complement of that closed interval? that is minus infinity to A open union. Can we say that is an open set? I know each part is open. So, we are saying then we need to analyze something like if A and B are open, can I say A union B is open or not? So, we have defined open sets. Now, let us look at the properties of open sets like we looked at the properties of closed sets, right. So, let us look at properties of closed sets. So, we defined A is open, that was the definition we have said, A is open if A is equal to A interior and consequences. So, if this is a definition, then A is open if and only if A 
if and only if a complement is closed. Okay, so that we okay. So let us look at uh, some properties. Let us look at second if A and B are open. Uh, what about uh, can we say that empty set is open set? Is there any problem if we say so? Probably somewhere. Okay. So before that, let us just write empty set is open. Why is it open? You can look at complement is closed, right? If you want to say what is the interior of empty set, it is itself, right? There is nothing inside. So, interior is equal to itself, whatever way you want to say it is open. So, let us look at the third that if A and B are open, then that implies A union B is open. So, what will be an argument for that? If X belongs to A union B, I want to show every point is a interior point, right? Or if you like, you can use your a and b then go to complements and then complements back and so on you can do that but let us write definition straight if x belongs to a union b then either x belongs to a or x belongs to b a is open so there will be an open ball at x included either in a or in b depending on whether a is open or b is open so that open ball will be inside a union b also right so that no problem at all so uh, if x belongs to A implies there is epsilon bigger than 0 such that the ball centered at x of radius epsilon is inside A implies the ball centered at x of radius epsilon is also in the A union B because it is in A. So, implies uh, uh, x belongs to A union B. Right, so implies X is interior A union B. So every point is interior. Every point X is interior point. So implies A union B is open. Right, no problem. What about if I add a third set C also? If something belongs to a union, it will belong to one of them. That is important. Right, either A or B, we are saying. So, you can take arbitrary union also, it does not affect the proof at all. Take arbitrary collection of open sets A alpha, then their union is also a open set. Because if X belongs to union A alpha, it belongs to one of them, right, and that being open, there is a ball inside that, that particular one, and hence in the union also, right, obvious. Keep in mind properties of closed sets. We said arbitrary intersection of closed sets was closed here, arbitrary union because they go complements. Set is open if and only if it is closed. So, keep that in mind. So, probably we should have another property about intersections. If A and B are open, Can you say A intersection B is open? Yes, no problem. We can go by definition. If X belongs to A intersection B, then it belongs to both of them, right? That means, there is an open ball at x of some radius epsilon 1 contained in A, but it also belongs to B which is open. So, there is some open ball of some other radius epsilon 2 centered at x which is inside B. At same point, there are two radii, one bigger one smaller. So, I can take the smaller one, 
that ball with a smaller radius will be in both A as well as in B. So, it will be inside A intersection B. So, every point in the intersection has a open ball contained in that set. So, intersection is an open set. Yes, is ok. So, here is if you like here is A, here is B, here is a point. So, there is one ball like this and other ball smaller. So, smaller one is inside the intersection anyway. Right, no problem. Or if you like to go by a definition, we have already proved a set is closed if and only if its complement is open. So, if A and B are open, their complements are closed. Finite union of closed sets is finite union of closed sets is closed. We have proved that. So, A complement union B complement is closed. But what is A complement union B complement? it is A intersection B complement. So, that is closed. So, A intersection B is open. If you want to go that you can that route also you can go or you can just go by definition every point of the intersection is a interior point. So, hence it is a open set. Once again does not matter whether I take two sets or three sets or any finite number of them same proof will work. because the minimum of the two I was taking the radii, any finite I can take the minimum of that, that will be inside any finite. So, inter any finite intersection of open sets is also open. Question can I say arbitrary intersection of open sets is open or not? So, think about this as a question, right. So, this goes to closed sets also. We had property of a closed sets also looked at. So, I am leaving this as exercise. So, this is ok. Uh, exercise arbitrary arbitrary intersection of open sets is open. If you think it is true, you have to give a proof. If you think it is not true, you need to produce example of a collection of sets which are open, right, but their intersection is not open, right. Okay. So, these are various properties of uh, open sets. So, let me just see if anything else to is to be said, then we will let us do it. So, close if and only if that we have done. So, that is a definition or uh, we defined open sets and that is same as the complement is close. So, that follows from the previous theorem and here are the properties which we have just now proved. Every open ball is an open set that is ok, right. Like every open interval is open set, every open ball, every point is an interior point, we discuss that. A and B are open, intersection is open that you can extend it to finite number of sets. So, property this, you can extend it to finite number of sets. Whether you can extend it to arbitrary intersection or not, that is a question left for you to analyze. Union is ok, that we have proved. So, these are properties of open sets. Here is something, uh, I will not prove that, but uh, it is quite nice property to have it handy. It says, if it characterizes open sets in the real line, it says a set is open in R, then it can be written as a disjoint union of open intervals. Every open set, it need not be a interval every open set can be written as a disjoint union of open intervals. That means, open intervals are some in some sense give you everything, all open sets by taking countable, uh, by taking union. Anyway, why this uh, is important or useful, let me just say, supposing U contained in, let us say R n is open. Let us take any open set in R n. Okay. Then for every x belonging to u, 
it is an interior point so there must be a ball around that point inside so implies there is some radius let us call it epsilon x bigger than 0 such that the ball centered at x of radius epsilon x is inside u x belongs to it right that is the center then what is u can i say what is u equal to in terms of these balls do you agree that i can say that this is same as x epsilon x union over all x belonging to u all balls are inside u so the union is inside u but all points are inside the balls so all u also is inside the union so both are equal is it okay for everybody that this implies this obviously because if i take union union of singletons x that is the whole space u whole set u so u is inside the union of balls which is inside u again so everything must be a equality so u is equal to so this says an open set can be written as a union of open balls you see interpret this every open set is a union of open balls so if you interpret in the real line that says every open interval for example every open set is a union of open intervals right balls are open intervals now given two intervals you can always make them disjoint kind of by taking intersections so that is the basic idea so we will not prove that so it says not only that so in the real line you can write not only as a disjoint union of interval uh, as a union of open intervals you can write as a disjoint union of open intervals so that is a very useful thing and uh, uh, if you don't this indexing set i is not saying it is uh, finite or countably infinite or what some collection actually one can show if you forgo disjointness then you can write every open set is a countable union of open intervals then you make it countable that property uh, uh, you will not be using it but that is the beginning of something called uh, a subject called metric spaces and you say real line is uh, where everything comes from open intervals every from countable union so you say it is a second countable space and such kind of thing so that is a, something separate but this is useful uh, sometimes uh, or it's a beautiful result in itself saying that every open set can be decomposed into a union of disjoint union of intervals so just keep that result in mind sometimes you may use it in your uh, courses somewhere else so what we have done we have looked at uh, basically properties of various kinds of sets right we started looking at a set the limits of sequences may not be inside right so we looked at sets which are called closed sets what are closed sets where the limits of sequences of elements of that set are also inside right so that we called as uh, a closed set then we looked at a set may not be closed but you can have something called the closure of a set right so a is always subset of a closure and closure is the smallest closed set which includes a right but that is interesting i think i should say that something more about it we proved a result that given a a closure is the smallest closed set including a remember this we proved that so this is basically by proving that a closure is always a closed set a is inside it and closure of closure is itself okay so that is the smallest but now look at this given any set a a given is contained in say whole space so let us write say R n. A may not be closed, but it is contained in R n, which is a closed set, right? The whole space is closed. So let us 
collect together all set C in R n, C close and C includes A. So, look at the collection of all closed sets in R n which includes C. Well, at least we have got one candidate, this set is non empty right, because R n is member of R n belongs to you right, because R n is closed and it includes A. Now, if I take the intersection of all sets C belonging to you, look at all the sets which are inside this collection and take the intersection. What can you say about this set intersection? That will be a closed set because arbitrary intersection of closed sets is closed and each one of them includes A. So, A is subset of this and it is closed. Right? My claim is this is smallest one because we have taken the intersection of all. So, in fact, this is nothing but this is equal to this set is equal to A closure. So, this is another way of saying what is A closure. Look at the intersection of all closed sets which include it that will be small s and that is closed. So, it has to be A closure. So, that is another way of defining A closure. You will find it somewhere. Now, can you say what is A interior? Given a set A, can a similar thing be said about A interior? Try to make a guess. Given any set A contained in R n, what can you say about A interior? It is the largest. Interior is always an open thing inside, right, but empty set is open. So, there is a, so I should try to make it bigger, right. So, try if you like try to prove it A interior is the largest, you can deduce it from here also if you like is the largest open subset of A. So, what we are saying is look at all open subsets which are inside A take their union that must be a interior. Okay. So, uh, various you can, this is nice uh, playing around with sets and definitions. So, uh, I am leaving this also as an exercise because we do not really need it, but it is good it will help you to understand interior points and so on and open sets and so on. Okay. So, let us see what okay. now let us come to a very important concept. We started looking at sets whose limits may not be inside. Right, limits of sequences, but there can be sets which have no convergence of sequences at all. There could be sets, right, which does not have any convergence of sequence, convergent sequence at all. But possibly there is a convergent subsequence of every sequence. There are no convergent sequences, but every sequence has a convergent subsequence, right. There could be sets with that property. So, they turn out to be very important collection. So, we say this is a such a set is called a compact set. A set is called compact if every sequence, the sequence may not converge at all, but it should have a subsequence converging where to a point inside the set that is a condition right. Are you understanding what I am saying the definition? Yes, subsequence converges and the limit is inside that set. Well, look at the sequence minus 1 to the power n that sequence is not convergent. Every sequence need not converge right. It may not have any convergent subsequence at all also. Look at the sequence 2 n right neither the sequence converges nor any subsequence converges right. So, convergence of a sequence is independent of anything, but some sets have that property. There are sequences, some of the sequences may converge, some may not converge. Those who converge 
collect the limit points and put them together in a box we call that a closure and so on but now we are looking at those sets which have the property given any sequence it should positively have a convergent subsequence at least one okay so for example let us look at examples look at uh, uh, look at uh, but convergent to a point inside the set that is important keep that in mind look at the closed interval say 0 1 look at the closed interval 0 1 take any sequence in that closed interval take any sequence in that closed interval right we proved a theorem that given any sequence there must be a monotone increasing or monotone decreasing subsequence so given any sequence in the closed bounded interval 0 1 there is a subsequence of it of this sequence which is monotonically increasing or decreasing and it remains between 0 and 1 so it is bounded so the closed interval has the closed bounded interval 0 1 has the property that every sequence has a subsequence which is monotone and bounded so it must converge by completeness property so the closed bounded intervals have that property that we are looking at namely every sequence has got a convergent subsequence converging to a point inside that set right so any closed bounded interval a b is a compact subset of the real line by this definition so i am giving examples now so example 0 1 is compact is that okay it is a compact set because given any sequence by our earlier theorems on sequences it has a monotone sequence and it remains between a and b so it is bounded so it must converge so every sequence has a convergent subsequence let us try to look at say a b let us take any sequence inside let us try to copy the earlier proof where it goes wrong if at all or it works for this also take any sequence in the open a close b then it has a monotone sequence subsequence it is bounded by a and b so it must converge that is up to completeness but the limit may or may not be inside open a and close b because earlier for the subsequence every term was between a and b so the limit could be equal to a or could be equal to b but that remains inside that interval right so limit is inside here the limit can become for example a if you look at the sequence a plus 1 over n right then that is going to converge to a any subsequence that also will converge to a because the sequence itself is convergent but a is not inside the set so this is not a compact set because we have produced right not compact so it looks like this this uh, close bounded interval seems to be a prototype of compact sets so let us try to prove a result we guess a result now that a set in rn is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded so we want to prove a theorem so a is compact if and only if A is closed and bounded. So, we are, let us try to prove, if we are able to prove, then it is true, if not, then we have a contradiction. Okay. So, let us try to prove. So, let us say A is compact. So, this is given. So, let this is given to show A is closed and bounded. So, how do I prove A is closed? 
definition what is saying a is close if a sequence of elements of a converges somewhere then that must be inside the set a so let ans belong to a an converge to a belonging to r then we want to show a belongs to small a element a belongs to the set a what is given to us a is compact and the compactness is every sequence has a convergent subsequence converging in the set so an is a sequence which is itself converging by the compactness property it must have a subsequence which is converging but to a limit which is inside the set but the sequence itself converges so every subsequence has to converge to the same limit and that is in a right because it is close so small a belongs to so let us write then by compactness an has a subsequence so let us write an k an k converging to something in a right it, it only says it has a convergent subsequence converging to something right which is in a but that something is a because an converges to a and it is a subsequence right because it is a subsequence implying that a belongs to a so we are using the fact compactness says there is a subsequence which is convergent but the important thing is compactness says that the limit must be inside the set on the other hand sequence itself is convergent so every subsequence must converge to the same limit and the limit being a a belongs to capital a so a is closed so a is next i should prove that a is bounded if a is compact it must be <coughs> bounded if not if it is not bounded what will happen if it is not bounded is a such set of rn subset of rn right what is uh, when do you say a subset of rn is bounded we not defined it as such right for real line we defined bounded that it is between alpha and beta when would you say a subset of rn is bounded because you can go any direction now right so there is a ball which includes a is that a good enough definition we'll say a set is bounded if there is ball of some radius you can take it center at origin or doesn't matter which is inside right so if you want very precise you can say we'll say set a is bounded if there is some radius r say that the ball centered at origin of radius r includes the whole set a good enough is it okay so let us take that as a definition of bounded and now i want to prove if a set is compact it must be bounded so our definition of bounded is there is a ball which includes a so if it is not bounded what will happen whole of a is not inside any ball whatever ball i take there is something which is outside right so what will be the distance of so if i take a ball of radius n n natural number then there is a point outside right so that point outside how much away it will be from origin distance at least bigger than n right because it is outside there is a ball of radius so there is a ball of radius n at origin 
Okay. So, this is n. If there is a point outside, what will be the distance of that point? It will be greater than n. Right? So, saying that A is not bounded implies, so I am saying this implies for every n there exists some x n such that norm of x n is bigger than n. Is that okay? Just what I were discussing, we have just written it out. That so, can this sequence x n have a convergent subsequence? Because there is a sequence in A and A is given to be compact. So, by that compactness, it should imply this should have a convergent subsequence, but can this sequence x n have a convergent subsequence? It is going away and away, right? The points are going away and away from 0. In a or you can say the sequence x n is unbounded, norm of x n is bigger than n. So, as n becomes larger, actually this is becoming larger and larger. right? So, this does not have this, this sequence cannot have a convergent subsequence. Is it okay? If you find visualizing in R n to be difficult, you can keep in mind your real line. You have got points on the line which are going away and away from 0. So, the sequence is unbounded and convergent implies that is a necessary condition. Every convergent sequence should be bounded. So, this is unbounded, so cannot converge by that also if you like. right? So, saying this sequence cannot converge because it is unbounded. So, that means our that assumption there is something outside every ball must be wrong. That means the whole of A must be inside one particular ball, right? So, implies A is bounded. So, what we have done? We have proved the theorem, right? that a subset of R n is compact if and only if it is bounded and close. That A less than B that is uh, closed interval that is compact, then it is closed. So, the whole space is not R or R n right? is not compact. Real line is not compact because it is closed, but it is not bounded if you like. For the same reason R n is not uh, compact. Okay. What way it is useful? So, I will let us come to it is closed and bounded that we have proved. Okay. Right. So, let us try to give uh, some more uh, applications of this compactness. It says, here is an important thing. See, if A is a non empty compact set, then we know it is bounded because it is closed and bounded. So, in particular, it is bounded. So, by the completeness property of real numbers, its greatest lower bound and least upper bound must exist. Right? That is only by boundedness. But compactness implies that those points least upper bound and greatest lower bound will be elements of that set if A is compact. It is a very important thing. Right? So, let us try to prove that. Okay? That um, greatest lower bound and least upper bound both are inside. Okay? So, let A be compact. When I do not write A, it could be an R n also. right? A in R or R n, any subset. Okay. Uh, A is compact. So, let us write A non empty, okay, because otherwise for empty set everything is okay. Uh, let 
alpha b equal to greatest lower bound of a. Alpha exists by completeness property. Uh, okay, there is a slight uh, logical issue because what is completeness for R and I have not discussed actually. Let us keep it on the real line for time being. I can define it, but I think I do not see much point of you knowing that. One can define what is called completeness property for R n. Let us not go into that. So, let us keep this A is compact A subset of real line. Let us do it only for the real line, okay? so that we do not have to bother about much. So, claim alpha belongs to A. We want to claim that alpha must belong to A. Now, this is very simple and it is very, uh, uh, it just depends on what is the definition of here is my alpha, which is the greatest lower bound. That means what? All the elements of the set A are on the right side of alpha, right? Alpha is the greatest lower bound. It is a lower bound and the greatest of them. So, everything else is on the right side, right? Now, definition of it says that if I for every epsilon bigger than 0, if I look at alpha plus epsilon, that will be a point on the right side. Can that be an upper bound for A? Can alpha plus epsilon be an upper bound for A? Alpha is the least upper bound, uh, uh, alpha is the greatest lower bound. So, can something bigger than alpha be a lower bound? No, other than definition of greatest lower bound is contradictory. That means what? That means, between alpha and alpha plus epsilon, there must be a point of the set A, because I want alpha plus epsilon should not be a lower bound. So, there must be a point on the left side of it. So, there must be a point. So, implies there exists some point. So, let us call it x epsilon such that alpha less than x epsilon less than alpha plus epsilon. So, there must be a point here x epsilon and that x epsilon should belong to the set A. There must be a point of that, otherwise it cannot will contradict. This is the crucial thing, this is the definition of, right. See, uh, I at one point I had said that if you want to understand what is true, then you should also understand what is false, All right. So, it is the negation or the definition whichever way you like alpha plus epsilon cannot be least upper bound uh, greatest uh, lower bound. So, there must come something inside. So, whenever you want to understand what is true, you should also look at what is negation of that statement, what is false to understand that. So, I am going to now, so this is definition and what is given to me? A is compact. And how is compactness defined? In terms of sequences and convergent subsequences, right? So, from here, I should try to produce some sequence somehow or the other, right? And then go to a subsequence and convergent inside the set using compactness. So, how can I produce a sub a sequence by using this fact? We, and I want it to be convergent. So, the obvious thing is take, this is true for every epsilon. So, specialize epsilon equal to 1 over n. Specialize epsilon equal to, so in particular, so we write in particular for epsilon equal to 1 by n, there exists some x n such that x n belongs to A and alpha less than x n less than alpha plus 1 by n for every n, right? Because something is happening for every epsilon, so I have specialized it to epsilon equal to 1 over n. 
is it okay i have got a sequence now xn and that sequence xn is between alpha and alpha plus 1 over n so can i say sequence is convergent yes convergent where to alpha so no xn belongs to a xn converges to alpha uh, okay what does compact till now we have not used any compactness or anything right we have only used the definition of alpha now compactness says that this must have a convergent subsequence subsequence converging in the set but the limit is alpha and the sequence itself is convergent that implies alpha must be inside a because sequence has a subsequence which is convergent but that subsequence will converge only to the same limit as the sequence converging and that is alpha so by compactness alpha must belong to a so by compactness or if you like uh, xn is a sequence converging to alpha a is closed so limit must be inside you can shortcut using the fact that compactness means closed and bounded implies alpha belongs to a because a compact equivalent to closed plus bounded if you like either way you can write so what we have done is it till now till this point what i have done is if alpha is greatest lower bound of a set then there is a sequence converging to it till this point we have not used anything only definition so if a number alpha is greatest lower bound there must be a sequence converging to of the set elements of that set which you are taking the greatest lower bound converging to alpha in fact something more i can do i can make this sequence xn a monotonically decreasing sequence i can specialize it because i can always choose something on the other side if it doesn't work i go to the next number and go to the next one because if once i have chosen x1 between x1 and alpha there must be an element of the set because x1 cannot be so there may be x2 bigger than x1 similarly x3 and so on you can go on doing such kind of things so you can improve this but this is very nice and important thing that if the in terms of sequences right that if alpha is greater so or bound then there is a sequence of elements of the set converging to that alpha and compactness says this must belong to the set so alpha belongs to a so this proves that if alpha is least upper bound oh sorry if alpha is greater so or bound then it belongs to the set same property true for least upper bound why will be on the other side only you will be instead of waving your there on the right side everything now you will be saying everything on the left side so if beta is least upper bound then beta minus epsilon cannot be least upper bound so there must be something in say so take epsilon equal to 1 over n again so alpha minus 1 over n will be doing the same analysis you will do right okay so this uh, proves the theorem that if uh, it is a compact set then greater so or bound and least upper bound are elements of that set this will be useful later on when you want to maximize and minimize functions in many situations your functions will have domain which is compact and the functions will be continuous i have not really defined but all if you know continuity and so on then you will get that the range is compact and hence upper bound and function must have a right the range must have a least upper bound and get a lower bound and that must belong so that says that will give you a theorem for continuous functions every continuous function must attain its bounded and must attain its maxima and minima so that will come in calculus later on okay so compact sets are defined as sets 
in terms of sequences we are defining. Every sequence in that set has a subsequence which is convergent in the set that is compactness. Using that we said every compact set must be closed and bounded that is one. Second, if a set is compact then inter, uh, very uh, uh, interesting and uh, application of that is that it is bounded. So, greatest lower bound and least upper bound exist as a real line. So, they must be attained that means, they are in the set itself right. For like uh, open interval 0 1 the greatest uh, lower bound is 0, but that is not part of the set right. Similarly, least upper bound of open interval 0 1 is 1, but that is not inside the set and that is because open interval 0 1 is not compact we know that right here. So, let us look at some more uh, properties of this. So, there is a, another way of defining compactness uh, which uh, uh, which finds uh, okay, why we should be doing this at all. See, there is something you should be doing that because it is a part of slavers, right. But there are some things which why it is a part of slavers because there is some other reason for that. The reason for looking at something called a cover of a set is that in this way we will using we will define what is called a open cover of a set and define some properties of compact sets in terms of this and then that will make it independent of sequences and such things. And there are spaces where you can define compactness where there are no notion of a sequence, but compactness becomes important ok. So, I uh, will probably indicate it later on. So, let us just uh, look at for the time being that it is mandatory for us to know what is a covering and uh, how compactness is defined in terms of it is important. So, what does the English word cover mean? It should cover right what else it could be. So, we want to say given a set there is something that covers. So, if A is a subset of B then you will say B covers A, but in general one set may not cover another one may not be subset, but there may be a collection of sets their union covers that given set. Then we say this collection is called a cover for the given set. So, a set theory purely a collection of say here it is G alpha of subsets uh, of R n is called a cover for A if A is inside the union it covers. If each G alpha is open then we say it is an open cover for A right. We are specializing cover by sets that is a cover and if I can say each G alpha is open then we say it is a open cover for A. Let us look at some examples uh, of this you can manufacture many. For example, uh, if I take the open interval 0 1 and look at 0 comma 1 minus 1 over n. 0 to half right minus 0 minus 1 by 3. So, that is increasing right. I am making that point slowly increasing and increasing their union will be the open interval 0 1 is that ok. Union of open interval 0 to 0 comma 1 minus 1 over n forms a cover of the interval 0 1 right because it is starting at 0 ending at 1 over 1 minus 1 over n. So, slowly it is becoming going to the right and right. So, every point of 0 1 sometime or the other will be inside on the left side of 1 minus 1 over n is that ok. Is it clear? Because 1 over n goes to 0. So, 1 minus 1 over n goes to 1. So, it is increasing to the right side. So, this will be a cover and each is an open set is an open interval. So, this is an open cover of 0 1 ok. Some other examples are given. So, look at 1 to infinity then you can look at 0 to infinity is an open set which covers it right is an open interval. So, open cover of it and so on. There are many examples you can construct to yourself many more ok. I am just giving you some to get an idea of open. So, here is a very important property is called the Hein-Borel theorem. It is for the real line 
okay we are looking at it says an a close bounded interval ab is given and you are given an open cover of this okay by open sets j i i is an uh, interval that is ab and there is a covering of i by open sets j j belonging to some collection okay some collection of in open sets cover it claim that we don't need a full cover there is a finite number of them so that that means there exists j1 j2 jn such that i is contained in this finite union only so from a arbitrary collection you have come down to a finite sub collection which covers it is a very important thing you understand what i was saying given any arbitrary open cover of the close bounded interval ab there is a finite sub cover of it there is a finite sub collection of the given collection which covers it right and this goes by the name heine borel theorem so let us try to prove this theorem okay and the idea of the proof is rather simple so let me let me try to uh, give you the idea and then prove it so what we are given given i equal to ab is inside union of j j belonging to some collection s j open each j is open It implies there exists j1 j2 j n such that i is contained in union of j i i equal to 1 to n given any open cover cover of a close bounded interval by open sets there is a finite sub cover there is a finite sub collection which is enough to cover it you don't have to do all so let us write the proof so here is my a and here is my b so the idea of the proof is i start with the point a and go to a nearby point say x and look at this interval ax look at a part of the interval ab starting from a close interval a to x possibility is a to x is covered by finitely many members of that given collection this interval which is a sub interval part of ab has the property that a to x has a finite sub cover or it may not have it may or it may not right so the idea is try to collect such points and show that they have a largest element and that is b so a to b will have a finite sub cover so idea is let us construct let a be the set of all x belonging to ab such that a to x has finite sub cover what is our aim to show b is an element of this set aim is to show that b belongs to it right because if b belongs a to b will have a finite sub cover will be through so we are reformulating the problem in some way so that we can get a hold of it this set a so note this set a is non empty set why it is non empty that means what i have to show there is at least one element of x between a and b which belongs to this set a right i can take x equal to a itself for example a belongs to a a comma a x is equal to a so it is a closed interval a comma a it is part of ab and it is only a single point so i can pick up any element in that cover open cover 
right one is one element is enough to say that a comma a is covered by a open set j is it okay only one is enough why finite only one is enough for the singleton is that okay because a comma the point a belongs to the interval ab okay because a belongs to ab is contained in union of j j belonging to s so what does it imply a belongs to j for some j right because it belongs to this this is inside the union so a has to belong to one of them pick up any one you like so implies a comma a is inside j so interval a comma a has a finite sub cover so a belongs to the set a so it is not empty so that is a first observation second a is bounded above it is bounded above why it is bounded above where are the elements x you are picking up elements of the interval ab so x cannot be bigger than b they are all inside ab so they are bounded above by b okay is bounded above by b so we have got a non empty set which is bounded above implies lub of a call it alpha exists lub exists right by the completeness property of real number it is a non empty set which is bounded above so lub must exist note alpha is between a and b because what is alpha b is an upper bound right b is an upper bound so least upper bound cannot be bigger than b it has to be less than or equal to b and all elements are bigger than a so this is between a and b alpha is between a and b claim that alpha is equal to b that will prove the theorem this will prove will that prove also because if a is equal to b then a comma b will have finite sub cover so i have to only show that this this upper bound so look at the picture that's what i said that a to x has got a finite cover a finite sub cover pick up all these x's and try to take the largest possible x with that property and we try to show the largest possible is has to be b it cannot be something smaller so a to b will have a finite sub cover so that is the only thing to show that it has okay so let us uh, prove that and most often than not such proofs go by contradiction so suppose alpha is strictly less than b so here is the picture a here is b and here is my alpha here is my alpha claim that alpha is less than b that is the assumption we will try to prove a contradiction that it cannot be strictly less it has to be equal to b okay now if it is strictly less than b then it is in the interval ab then it is in the interval ab and ab is covered by those open sets j so alpha will belong to one of the j's right so let me uh, just draw a picture so here is my something this is my j this yellow one is uh, okay <laughs> this looks very bad so this yellow one is j that is a open set is it okay because 
a b is covered by j s open sets j s right and alpha is inside a b. So, alpha will belong to one of them. If it belongs to one of them, it is an open set. So, there will be open interval which will include alpha. So, call it as something c to d. So, what I am saying is there is an open interval c to d which includes alpha. Okay? Now, if this open interval includes it, then there must be a some point beta on the right side of alpha. Right? There are many, but there is at least one. And on the left side c to alpha, alpha is least upper bound of all those x's. So, there must be an x belonging to A, there must be an x belonging to A which is on the left side of alpha, because alpha is the least upper bound of those x's. Right? Is it okay? Now, look at the interval a to x, x belongs to a. So, finite number of j's will cover a to x and this beta is covered by c to d, which is inside j. This c to d, this c to d is inside j, j was an open set. So, one more j, if I include that covers beta also. So, that means from a to beta is covered by finite number of j's, because a to x is covered, because x is in a. So, by the definition of a, a to x is covered and beta belongs to c to d, which is inside a j. So, if I take that j also earlier finite plus one more, they cover alpha to a to beta, but beta is bigger than alpha beta is bigger than alpha and we said alpha is the least upper bound of those which are covered by finitely many. And we have found another something bigger than alpha which is beta, which has the same property. That means, beta must belong to A. That is not possible because alpha is the least upper bound of A. That is a contradiction simply, nothing more. So, probably I will repeat it next time, but it is very easy to understand and alpha is the least upper bound. Okay? So, assume alpha is less than b. So, this alpha must belong to one of the j's and alpha is an open set. So, you must have an open interval including that point inside. So, c to d is the open interval including alpha. Right? On the right side pick up any point beta, on the left there has to be a point of a because alpha is least upper bound. So, a to x is covered, x to beta is covered by this. So, this finitely many cover a to beta that is a contradiction to the fact that alpha is least upper bound of this and that proves the theorem. So, probably I will repeat it next time again the proof very simple nice proof. So, what we are saying is that close bounded interval a to b has the property every open cover has got a finite sub cover and next lecture we will prove the converse is also true in the sense that for a compact set this is one of the equivalent ways of saying uh, every open cover has a finite sub cover. Okay.